Ah, oh, welcome along guys, welcome back to the garage where I'm once again fiddling with the hypermotard. Progress has been slow, I agree. We're on episode four and I've only taken a few bits off the bike. <laughs> this could drag on for quite some time, which is just as well as our lockdown has been extended for a further three weeks and I can see it being at least a couple of months until we can probably get out. So I've got plenty of time to get this bike done. I'm going to be bringing you more episodes, more enjoyment hopefully. I'm really pleased with the way these videos are going down as I mentioned last time. I appreciate having you around watching this, keeping me company while I fiddle with my bits in the garage. <laughs> right, let's get moving. Roll the intro. I do like to fiddle with my bits and pieces. So I will start the video in the usual format. I'll show off some of my new bits before we get stuck in and get me hands dirty. I'm actually quite clean. They're too clean. There's too much hand washing going on. My hands have never been so clean. I want to get them dirty. Right, so we've got some new bits and pieces. I mentioned last week some RNG bits. Well, they've come through with the goods. We've got front wheel spindles and we've got crash protection for the frame. Look at this. It goes through the whole frame for the crash bung. So I thought I'd better get a bit of crash protection on here. Um, after doing all this work, last thing I want to do is put it down the road and smash it to pieces. I've also gone for the oil cooler guard because the oil cooler is quite exposed on these. So I've gone for the, uh, the RNG oil cooler and the tail tidy. Now I'm not sure exactly what to do with the tail tidy. I want to get a nice short tail on this bike. So I may end up using only some bits from this kit. I've also mentioned last time a polishing station. Well, I've got this buffing machine from Sealy. I must say a massive thanks to Sealy, actually. I reached out to them to see if they'd be interested in helping out with the project, and they provided me with this uh, buffing station, this polishing unit free of charge. So massive thanks to Sealy for, for getting involved with this. That's going to be used for things like buffing, the stainless steel exhaust back up to a nice sort of mirror, not completely mirror, but a nice finish. I also, as I mentioned, will be polishing the forks. And not only polishing, but I want to get things like these casting marks out of the fork, out of the yokes. Again, here, look, very unpleasant looking casting marks. I want to, I want to get those out with the polishing machine. So what I've done, I've actually ordered some uh, sort of more. It's like. Uh, scouring type pads or scouring pads to go in this to actually you know give it a bit more abrasion because this is really just for polishing i want to use this for abrasion as well so i've got some scouring pads on the way to get out those cast marks on the yoke so that's all to come so there we go little overview of what i've got coming so let's get started let's get stripping let's try and get this bike apart okay let's crack the tools open in my lovely new tools chest Brake lines off, ready for a replacement. Well, I'm gonna get the pads out of these and just see what the pistons are like. Move this back in a little bit. Oh. Oh. Oh dear, brake pad all up the wall. A little squirter. Brake cleaner in there. The electric toothbrush. Hopefully it don't look too bad. This isn't one sheet. This is half a roll. That has come up quite nicely. I've got one of the pistons out and it's actually very good condition. I was debating whether to change all the seals uh, on the calipers but they all look very good now I've cleaned everything up I've pushed them back in now they seem free they move relatively easily I had no trouble with any uh, brake leaks or, or fluid leaks or anything so 
I was debating whether to change the seals, but I think I'm just going to put them back together. Clean brake fluid, Whee, it's quite a lot. And pop that back in. That's all pretty good, Nick. One of the pistons in the other caliper was uh, had a little bit of corrosion around the outside. I just went around the little bit of wire wall and smoothed it over. I'll get a new set of pads for these. We'll refit them when the bike goes back together. So let's put them away in the box until we're reassembling. So that's the calipers and lines all taken care of. I think next we will, let's get the subframe and exhaust off. Bend over. Look at that rust. That won't be going back on. Bit of persuasion. Oh, there we go. Right, next job, I think, is to get the shock off. It's got this strange height adjustment bar on the hypers. Now you, you twiddle this and it adjusts the height of the back of the bike. Now it's all secured at the bottom of the swinging arm. There's a blank here with a bolt that goes through, and this, this height adjustment bar and the shock is all secured in there. So once the shock's disconnected, I guess the swinging arm's going to drop and it's going to hit the exhaust underneath so it makes sense to get the exhaust off first you will be pleased to hear i now have an exhaust puller that came with my van Diemen exhaust for the h2 so no more zip ties we're properly kitted mm. ah, that's easier spring removed ah, easy let's take the terminoni only off easy. I'll take the carbon shield off because that's likely to get dropped and hit and, and broken so I'll take that off as well. I've got more springs down here. Uh, that doesn't feel over keen about coming off. Now I'm gonna have to split the exhaust because this header from the rear cylinder goes down and meets in with that collector and then the front ones I can't remove it as one piece I've got to try and split this exhaust here somehow I'm going to try and take the front header off and I might be able to pull the front header oh, that's, that's loose it's pretty loose as well oh. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh, that's it. maybe I can twist maybe it will twist now come on you bugger Oh, this front piece is bolted on here. <laughs> Look at this. Everything's in the way. That's the way to handle it. Oh, let's repeat the McWaggle. Oh, you sack of. Oh, it's coming. Oh, yeah, I'm. Oh. With some perseverance banging away out here. I've managed to get it off. I just was tapping it uh, with a bit of a chisel, a bit animal, a bit animal, I have to confess, but a bit of a chisel, a bit of a hammer just to free up that seal. Because it's just all sealed up with, with carbon. It's probably never been off this. I wouldn't be surprised. But perseverance pays off. Now to remove the other header and see if I can get it off the bike on the Abba stand. The angle might be a bit too acute. Let's see. I can't get the socket in there. So I think it's going to be an Allen key job. Could be a nightmare. That one? No. Bigger. Bigger. Ah, thankfully that one is loose. God, thankfully they're incredibly loose. Incredibly loose. Maybe they should be that loose, I don't know. Room. Well, I got it off, couldn't get it apart, but I managed just to squeeze, bend and managed to drop it out, but I don't know if you can see, but in the process of getting it out, 
I've scratched the inside of the, the swinging arm quite badly, which I'm annoyed about. And the rear of the exhaust was also notching into the rear caliper and put some marks in the rear caliper. So not the cleverest, not my finest moment getting that out. Trying to do stuff without stripping it down properly. You know, always try and take stuff apart on the bike. It's much easier to get this stuff apart on the bike than what it is off the bike or when it's part removed. Lesson to be learnt there. So that's the exhaust off. Bit of a job, bit annoyed with myself that I've scratched that. It's nothing more annoying when you're actually damaging <laughs> the bike as part of your restoration. So I'm a little bit annoyed with myself there, but never mind, let's move on. Let's try and get the shock off now, and hopefully that'll be a bit more agreeable and won't put up quite as much as a fight. First of all, I'm gonna get the carbon chain guard off so we can get proper access to the shock. But look at the state of these bolts here. They are rusty. They will not be going back on. Make sure I get a decent fit with the socket. I do not want to be rounding those off. Hopefully not too tight. Now I'm gonna to have to rethink how I'm jacking the bike now because as soon as I loosen the shock, the whole swinging arm's gonna drop and then the front of the bike's gonna drop because it's actually supported on the ABBA stand at the back here, that's tied in with the, the rear hub. So I need to drop the ABBA stand, put the, bike, put the engine lift under the bike, support the weight of the bike, then lower it, take out this rear support, which will mean the bike will sit like that um, and then do some rejigging and then take the rear shock off. So a bit of rejigging of the ABBA stand now. I used this on the Fireblade project many moons ago. That's probably all it needs, just support the corner a little bit. I think that has got the weight now. I'll take that off from there. Yeah, take that out. Like so. Now I should be able to go up with the Abistan now. Now what happened? front of the bike will drop and the rear of the bike will go up. So there we go, readjusted the position. It should be free now. It looks even more precarious <laughs> than it did before. Now I can continue removing the rear shock. Actually looks a little bit like Jacati's new hover bike. <laughs> oh dear, looks good. Looks bloody brilliant on there, doesn't it? It's like something out of Star Wars. Mmm, I like it, I do. Money Penny, this is 007's new toy. Mmm, new toy it is. Miss Money Penny, I like it. Right, well, welcome back. I've gone away, had a cup of tea, had to think, and just thought about really what I need to do next before I take the shock off and stuff. Obviously, when I take the shock off, swinging arm's going to drop down, as I mentioned, so I'm going to get the chain off because that could put some stress on it and maybe even strip down the hub, get the hub off to reduce the weight. Safety first. Well, I was going to undo this before I took the chain off. I was going to undo the hub. Obviously, it's not better to hold that still once the swinging arm's off. It's not better to hold the brake line or put it in gear. And, but I don't have a socket to fit this. It's bigger than a 36. It's not a 42 like the other side. So I can't take the rear hub apart at the moment. So that scuppers any ideas of powder coating the, uh, the swinging arm. We'll see, you can always get it apart later on, but at the moment, can't get it off. So what I'll do is split the chain where I've taken the rivet head off and then just take the brake line off as well. And then it's all ready to, uh, to drop out later. Broken, broken. These are great, these chain splitting tools, but even if you don't take off the head of your pins, you'll even break these billet pins so I've actually broken a couple of these, which is really annoying. No matter how good your chain splitting tool is, 
it's important to take the head off your pins off before you before you break the uh, chains. But anyway, let's use this broken one. It'll still, it'll still do the job. Never work with people, animals, or chain breaking tools. Let's go old school on it. This time I've got it, I've come out with the big boy, the big three mil, one of those. Now it will behave itself. Yes, yes, I have it. There it is, the little bloody pain. She blows. Side stand. The paint just literally flaking off. Stuff like the kickstand and the bracket and all these little bits of gubbins, that will all go straight in a box to be sent off to be repowder coated and cleaned up. I'm gonna get myself an aqua uh, ultrasonic cleaning machine. I didn't realize how cheap they are, so I'm gonna get one. And stuff like this, these little bolts, you know, the springs, they can go in the uh, ultrasonic bath and we'll see how they come up. Whilst you've been away, <laughs> I've been taking off some little bits. Rear brake, uh, master cylinder is now gone and I've disconnected the, the lines, so that's the rear brake line. I've also disconnected what seems to be the speed sensor. The speed sensor seems to be from the rear wheel on this. Here it is, I thought for a moment it had ABS. I thought it's not got ABS, so that's rear, the speed is set from the rear wheel, which is quite a nice touch. Still have your speed when you're doing wheelies. So all those little extra bits are off, the side stand is off as you saw. So I think I'm now ready to tackle the rear shock. This is what I'm a bit worried about, little rusty bolts like that. Hmm, how easy. I've been very lucky so far. Everything has come undone relatively easily. <laughs> God, now I've done it. T touch wood. Wood, I need some wood. What I really want to do is undo from here because all this is one piece here, all incorporating all of this bar. So if I undo it from here, that whole lot should drop out. Problem is, I can't get a socket in, but there is a nut the other side, so let's undo the nuts and then maybe that will slide out. We can but hope. Probably just spinning. No, nope, it's undoing. I'll get the shock off this mount and then we'll get the shock clear of that bolt then. There we go, top away. That's now come forward and hit the frame. So I'm gonna to have to support the swinging arm on something from underneath. I oh, know. The pink stool. Ah, that do. I'm not entirely happy with that. Oh, I'm coming out. Ta-da! Give it a good fingering. Now I could, in theory, just leave all that attached to the swinging arm when it comes off. But I want to really get the rear shock sent off serviced because it's probably never ever been done. So I want to split it down here. I've got my long Allen key wrench in this side holding a socket. Then I'll get the, uh, the other socket on this end. Oh, apparently, comfy sofa, thanks for your advice. It's, you can lose something inside the swinging arm here if you're not careful. So I just need to bear that in mind. Oh, it must be the socket on this end, it can be lost inside. So this side must be the threaded one, so I'm guessing he's saying if you lose it off the end of the socket as you pull that out, you're going to have a little job to get it out from inside the swinging arm. To catch it, they don't make it easy, do they? I want to keep tension on it all the way or I'm going to lose it inside. You just have to push it all the way through with. Ah, there it is. That's it. Gotcha. So now all of that should lift out. So there we go. 
shock and height adjustment linkage removed. So what I'm going to do now is I think next episode will be the big one. We'll try and remove the swinging arm. I think it's going to be tough. I really think it's going to be tough. Fingers crossed it's not going to be. <laughs> Thanks guys. See you later. Woo!